Beginning on October 17th, a series of earthquakes struck the northeastern edge of the unusually shaped Herderbreed volcano. These quakes were quite suspicious as they occurred at a depth that was plausible to represent a shallow intrusion of magma, that is, a depth of around 5 kilometers. This is made all the more unusual by the fact that the Herderbreed volcano which they occurred beneath is not considered an active volcano. Instead, for all intents and purposes, it is considered an extinct volcano which last produced a volcanic eruption more than 11,650 years ago. Then, on October 22nd, at around 9.40pm local time, another far more energetic series of earthquakes occurred in rapid succession. The largest of these earthquakes was a magnitude 4.1, originating just on the edge of Herderbreed's northern flank. As of the writing of this video, the earthquake series has consisted of more than 550 earthquakes and is still ongoing. Due to the presence of an ongoing magmatic intrusion at the nearby Askia volcano and the recurrence of earthquakes at this flat top volcano referred to as Atoya has caused several people to suggest that what is ongoing is another magmatic intrusion. However, although the hundreds of still ongoing earthquakes could theoretically represent a new magmatic intrusion, perhaps representing a sill or dike originating from the nearby Askia volcano, or maybe even being part of a reactivated magma chamber, I personally do not think that these earthquakes are magmatic. For context, the nation of Iceland is almost completely volcanic in origin, having originated from volcanism caused by a hotspot in the mantle, which somewhat closely intersected with a divergent plate boundary. On the island, the Eurasian plate is moving eastwards and the North American plate is moving westwards. This creates a series of cracks, rifts, and fissures allowing for magma to intrude into the surface at a path of least resistance forming a chain of volcanoes. Herderbreed, like other regional volcanoes, exists in one of these rift zones being a mere 25 kilometers northeast of the active Askia volcano which is currently at a yellow alert level. To the east and west of the Herderbreed volcano are distinct rift areas and fissure swarms. To the east is the Kavirkfajol fissure swarm, and to the west is the Askia fissure swarm. Whenever one of these two segments produces movement, it causes increased strain at Herderbreed. This then causes pressure to build up, subsequently being released via movement of a left lateral strike slip fault. Note how suspiciously perfect the quakes are as being along the straight line. In this portion of Iceland, magmatic intrusions tend to result in earthquakes over a somewhat broad area along a line. On the other hand, tectonic earthquakes also occur along a line, but are more clustered than their counterparts over a narrower region. Thus, although the earthquakes in the current swarm are largely occurring at 3 to 9 kilometers in depth, they did not occur alongside any notable ground deformation as shown in this INSAR image. If you are wondering how this unusually shaped volcano formed, this is how. When magma erupts into a thick ice sheet, it initially forms a layer of material which looks much like a dome out of pillow lava. However, if eruptive activity occurs for long enough, it can breach the top of the overlying glacier. As eruptive activity continues, the heat melts significant volumes of ice, creating a thick glacial lake around the volcano. After the glacial lake develops, eruptive activity shifts to a more explosive phase, depositing a rock type known as hyaloclastite. Over time, the erupting vent which now has an unusually steep profile breaches the surface of the lake, causing eruptive activity to change once again. Instead of being highly explosive, more effusive to moderately explosive eruptive activity occurs, sending lava flows to fill the area previously occupied by the lake. The movement of the lava is partially constrained by the presence of the glacier, forming an incredibly steep slope at its edge. After the glacier retreats, the highly unusual volcanic feature becomes visible for all to see. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank my new YouTube member, Dibs Online, for supporting this channel.